Hello and welcome back to Movie Flakes. Well, in House of the Dragon, Episode 8, House of Dragon removes sex scene. Will they no longer show sex session again? Well, his House of Dragon fixed Game of Thrones sex problem. Stay tuned to this video. Welcome to Movie Flakes, home of reviews and breakdowns. Well, before we continue, before we start with this analysis, if you want to participate in our Funko Pop giveaway in the book Fire and Blood, just subscribe to this channel, like this video, and tell us which character you think should be king and why. The winner will be revealed on October 28th. Let's get back to discussion. The first episode of House of the Dragon contains exactly two laughs. First, when Daemon Targaryen, the resident bad boy of Westeros, uses an offensive term. The second occurs when the same figure makes a point about royal succession, by far House of the Dragon's favorite subject. During an impromptu speech at a brothel, as two customers freeze in flagrante to listen. You see, sex is funny, so it's funny. That's because it is if it sounds childish. The fact that Game of Thrones frequently had the vibe of being co-written by a teenage guy and a history nerd gave the series a euphoric, lusty energy amidst the never-ending fear of cold. This House of the Dragon scene, however, may portend a fresh tone for the fantasy series as it appears to address one of Game of Thrones' most persistent criticisms, its portrayal of sex. The 2011 premiere of HBO's Game of Thrones was well received as an entertaining and largely authentic adaptation of George R. R. Martin's fantasy series. Blood would undoubtedly be present, as well as nudity. Not for children. The convoluted sequence of European history, which served as one of Martin's main sources of inspiration made casual history buffs feel knowledgeable. As the seasons went on, controversy grew more quickly than the primary characters in Game of Thrones were murdered off. There was a lot of nudity, which most fully grown people didn't find objectionable, but it was almost always done at the expense of female actors and almost always in sexually explicit settings. Men were often only shirtless when they were naked, either in the bedroom or on the battlefield. However, only one of the four leads in House of the Dragon gets undressed and engages in sexual activity in the pilot, Matt Smith. Your screen's brightness will determine exactly how much of him you can see, similar to its predecessor. The show House of the Dragon is really gloomy. Smith is having sex while completely naked, though. That is over shortly. Damon is just not in the mood because of all those annoying courtly activities running through his head. Fans of Game of Thrones sex position, in which sex is balanced with tedious talk, will enjoy what comes next. Damon talks to his naked girlfriend while covered in what appears to be a floral blanket, and expresses his intensely conflicted emotions. A good retort to its predecessor is the shock of seeing the male lead and possibly its most famous actor in House of the Dragon and the Buff. Lead actors Kit Harington and Peter Dinklage have declared they'd be down to get nude in response to the paucity of male nudity in Game of Thrones. After the show concluded, their female co-star Emilia Clark complained about the fuck-ton of nudity. Thrones' portrayal of women in general and its sex issue were intertwined. It frequently featured sexual assault on its female characters, and the program never shied away from showing the full horror of that crime. It frequently appeared to like it. One notorious scene, which deviates from Martin's books, shows a female character being sexually assaulted by her brother. On the night of her wedding, another enduring favorite suffered an assault. The series was tarnished for many by its predatory treatment of women, and probably caused many more to completely give up. Before the first episode of HBO's Game of Thrones aired, controversy over the show's sexual nature dogged House of the Dragon. Would the show be as outrageous as its predecessor, considering its source material, which may include everything from incest to grooming? The show pulls back on the amount of sex scenes, according to showrunner Miguel Sapochnik, while sequences depicting violence against women have been seriously evaluated. This appears to be the official line. In a later interview with Vanity Fair, show creator and producer Sarah Hess said, I think what our show does, and what I'm proud of, is that we decide to concentrate on the inherent violence against women in a patriarchal system. It's important to keep in mind that this show takes place in a fantasy setting. The patriarchy does indeed exist. Dragons are exempt. Whatever they wanted to include or exclude was up to them. But because of how closely Martin's stories resemble historical events, these discussions seem doomed to consume his writing. The most important thing is that covert actions have been revised for 2022 in the actual world. Game of Thrones lacked an intimacy coordinator, which has been criticized by cast members including Gemma Wellen, who called the show's sex scenes a frenzied chaos. House of the Dragon claims to, now that expectations have been met, hopefully the program can have a little fun and avoid being deflated by them. If the program lasts even half as long as Game of Thrones, it will be necessary. 
It's a start when Matt Smith starts yammering on about the line of succession in a crowded brothel. House of the Dragon, give us more of this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more videos.